Welcome to morning prayer this Thursday after a stormy Wednesday. Lots of uh, lots of excitement at the Walters house. Flooded basement. Water heater went down. Hope y'all weathered the storm fine. We'll begin in a moment on page seventy nine in the Book of Common Prayer. If uh, if there are any uh, barking noises in the background or whatnot, that's because there are plumbers here and uh, Coco, you know, greets guests angrily until she gets to know them. Good morning, Madge. Good morning, Gary. Good to see you all. Hope you're well today. Um, cool morning in Memphis. Page 79 in a few minutes. Morning, Yvette and Julie and Art. Good morning. Great to see all your names scrolling through here. We had a good day at LPS last night. I have to confess I was in and out of the um, of Amber's interview with Rami Shapiro, but I want to go back and listen to the rest of it. Uh, that's because uh, our basement flooded and our water heater uh, was a casualty of that. So lots of excitement yesterday at the Walters house. Anyway, everything I saw was, was splendid and his sermon was lovely at, at noon yesterday. Tomorrow, Judy Fentress Williams, uh, my Old Testament prof, remarkable scholar and preacher, dynamic, not your stereotypical Old Testament professor in any way. <laughs> so I commend her to you tomorrow at noon. She preached at Bishop Phoebe's ordination, if any of you were there. Morning, Bobby and Rod. Morning, Raymond and Carrington and Betty. Good to see all of you here. <clears throat> Page 79, Book of Common Prayer. We will, um, yeah, thanks, Gary. Glad you saw Rami. The opening sentences will begin on page 79 with the confession. Line from the prodigal. I will rise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Remember the reception he received. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Say the Venite on page 82. We'll begin and end with the antiphon on page 81 for Lent. Good morning, Gail and Sherry and Rick. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. 
Appointed Psalm is Psalm 69, page 679 in the prayer book. Page 679. This is actually just the appointed psalm for this day, the day after my basement flooded. Let's say it together. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I'm sinking in deep mire, and there's no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I've grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are, all, are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none for comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let the table before them be a trap, and their sacred feasts a snare. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and give them continual trembling in their loins. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let their fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their camp be desolate, and let there be none to dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you've stricken and add to the pain of those whom you have pierced. Lay their charge guilt upon guilt and let them not receive your vindication. Let them be wiped out of the book of the living and not be written among the righteous. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First readings from the prophet Jeremiah, 22nd chapter, beginning in the 13th verse. 
Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbors work for nothing and does not give them their wages, who says, I will build myself a spacious house with large upper rooms, and who cuts out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Are you a king because you complete, compete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Is not this to know me, says the Lord? But your eyes and heart are only your dishonest are only on your dishonest gain, for shedding innocent blood and for practicing oppression and violence. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, Lord, or alas, his majesty. With the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged off and thrown out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out and lift up your voice in Bashan. Cry out from Abarim, for all your lovers are crushed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth, for you have not obeyed my voice. The wind shall shepherd all your shepherds, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Then you will be ashamed and dismayed because of all your wickedness, O inhabitant of Lebanon, nested among the cedars. How you will groan when pangs come upon you, pain as of a woman in labor. The word of the Lord. Canticle 10, page 86. Good morning, Dottie and Kionde, Jenny and Zeta. Good morning. Second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second readings from Paul's letter to the, to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning in the 12th verse. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into, into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but of the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that this creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole cre <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, 
grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, let us wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Let's say Canticle 12, page 88. And um, let's, let's do the cosmic, let's do the earth and its creatures. So we'll do the invocation um, number two and then the doxology over on page 90. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters, all birds of the air, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. <clears throat> the Apostles' Creed, page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage is a... Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Call it for guidance over on page 100. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, 
that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving or intercession, um, either silently or feel free to type them into the comment section and we'll pray them along with you. Pray for anyone without a home during the storm, especially. He is for the Chipley family, for Connie Marshall and the boys as they try to adjust to life after John's death. Debbie, Mary Jane, Dash, Jim, Jimmy, Elizabeth. Thanksgiving for grandson Ble Blevin Johnson, turns nine. Prayers for Mary, Colin, and Caleb. Prayers for all who desire the vaccine and haven't received theirs yet. Prayers for Andy and Aline Hansen as they recover for all in the path of the storms. Pray for the victims in Atlanta uh, and for their families. Uh, Danita has prayers for all students still adapting to the to school during the pandemic. Douglas and Jennifer and those whose homes were damaged in the, from the storms. Again, prayers for the victims in Atlanta and for all people who are victims of um, violence and bigotry. Thanksgiving for this community. Oh, when I start, oh, Danita, we'll miss you. <laughs> for Brian and Jenny. Prayers for Jim. Kate. Let's close with a prayer of St. Chrysostom over on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you, friends. We have a blessed Thursday. See you at Calvary on Sunday. Um, Jenny, I'll see you at Saturday on Saturday at the uh, Vestry Retreat. Same with Madge. All is here. Appreciate you all gathering for prayer each day. Uh, holding up one another. Take care.